Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 144 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. Alright Fia, let's hear it. So after hearing the story regarding Pariah from Fia, we decided to call, the, call together the residents of the castle. Alright, the reason why I've called you here is none other than our results from the exploration of the Holy Grounds has come to a interesting revelation. So, seeing the serious faces we've got out, the residents are muttering amongst themselves. So, they're wondering why the gathering. So, our objective for coming to the Holy Ground was because Fia wanted to, and because the castle is called a dangerous weapon, we get, atta we get uh, targeted by people. So, said Fia has managed to recover her memories the ones she couldn't remember her, while we were in the God's Haze so we now know why Fia always wanted to come here and now I'll explain <laughs> in his heart of all I apologize to, to coup de vance he does not deserve an apology though. So anyway, he starts talking. What happened since we arrived in the God's Haze? That pillar of light ascending into the heavens. And all the weapons similar in make to the castle itself that we had to fight. And, well, they already know about the defenses they set up as well. So what we had learned at the end of our exploration was the Pillar of Light came from a god that was sealed inside a weapon, like fear. So, currently, Gods that are sealed inside weapons are handled as taboos and various forces will target them. And so in the God's Haze we were thinking we'd have get information that was sleeping there allowing us to release gods from a weapon, such as this. And in the end, aside from Fia, there is also Pariah, who is suffering from the same condition. Also Pariah is Fia's father, and Fiusha was a fictional kami. Um, fictional god and pariah is the true form of the fiction so to speak so why did few why was fuchsia the false god made and his name spread that is because pariah became a taboo and in order to not be killed not let Pariah be killed because of it. Well, that's the size of it. He was hidden away in the holy ground. So even though Fia had lost her memories, somehow she wanted to save Pariah, so headed for the holy ground. 
And hearing her will, we eventually ended up teaming up with her. Now, yeah, that's what he says. So at the same time we save Fia, we'll save Pariah as well. So that is a change to our objective. What do you think? Oh come on, don't ask the NPCs. Anyway, after hearing all that, all of them are, well, shocked. <laughs> Uh, okay, is that really true? So, Fuchsia is really Pariah, and then Fia is his daughter. Well, that's pretty deep. It's hard to believe all at once. Uh, Okay, everybody. Fia's sorry that she wasn't able to explain right away. But this is the truth. Absolutely not a lie. So, Fia's memories may be pretty unbelievable, but she wants you to believe them anyway. Pariah is in trouble and we want to save him. Well, since Fia is so forthright in the way she expresses herself, Well, the residents are still a bit uneasy, but... Okay, so no need to apologize that you weren't able to explain. You had lost your memory and, you know, it couldn't be helped. Okay, so it's not that we don't believe in Fia. Don't believe Fia either. Quite the opposite. We believe her more than anything. After all, we've come this far. What we were surprised about was... Was the Fuchsia thing. Oh yes, that. Yeah. As expected, the most unsettling knowledge was the fictional existence of Fiusia. That's not unreasonable. Everyone here is basically believers, the faithful of Fiusia. Ever since they were born, Fiusia had been who they believed in, whom they believed in. So, in this confusion, they're all trying to get their heads around it. So, we just let them do that until they come to a conclusion. Alright, how about that? How about it? Do you believe it? Okay, so thanks for talking to us about it. There was a lot to be surprised at, but we're convinced. So, to sum it up, this moving castle has come here this far in order to save Fiusia. Yeah, that's true. It seems like that was Fia's objective from the very beginning. That's how it is. 
So if we say that Fuchsia is the same existence as Pariah, that's basically how it... There's no mistake in that assessment. And in taking action to save Fia, at the same time, we also save Fuchsia. If that's how it is, there isn't any problem. Quite the opposite. We are among the Fuchsia faithful, are the exemplars here. Yeah, we're out to save Fuchsia. How about that for a religious pilgrimage? Yeah, that's right. I'm getting fired up. He's getting fired up, I should say. So, we were able to help Fuchsia himself. It's an honor. <laughs> so, the residents have kind of gotten their head around this Fuchsia faith and God's name thing. They didn't get angry or anything. And they didn't deny it, so I guess we're good. Yeah, looks like we didn't need to worry about that. Yep. The connections between people are so warm, right? Everybody's so happy. Or everybody is so straightforward and is willing to turn towards Pariah, her father. So the residents, so in their various ways, have been convinced. So moving the council very station forward. A question. So, since you wanted to talk to us, was there something you wanted? Yes, of course. Do you think we would talk to you stupid, ugly NPCs if we didn't have use for you? <laughs> okay. Yes, I want you to help us out. We're trying to find a way to save gods from these taboo weapons. All together we want to find it. And so we the leaders are naturally taking action on that part. But in the circumstances we can't take our time. So that's why we want everybody to cooperate in this. As much as possible we want to get these two gods saved. So we continue talking and everybody is, you know, straightforwardly accepting this. Okay, understood. If there's anything we can do, we'll do it. Of course, Fuchsia Sama, who's Fiusha, who's been suffering all this time, we're all going to save him. Hmm, okay then. Thanks. That's very reliable and we're happy. So let's all pool our efforts together and save him. So in order that all of us can work most effectively, I've always taken the time to sort out the work that needs done. So just follow this plan and we sh it would be a big help. So the elves will be in charge of translations. All throughout the God's Haze there is the carvings of the old, langu old magic language and the present magic language. And that's the elves duty. Most of the residents in particular, the craftsmen who are good with their uh, 
making stuff. They're going to be excavating in the in certain places in the God's Haze that Avaro has marked as noteworthy. And the Influs soldiers, who are good with, uh, well, weapons, get to in the various places, do guard work. And also keep, co keep communications up with the elves and the dragons. Hmm. So we, the Komodo Dragon Corps, will be primarily handling defense. So Kissner herself will be next to Fia most of the time, so she won't be directly ordering the knights. It would be hard to, but still. Let's fulfill our roles. NPC talk, blah blah blah. So, the influence soldiers that Kisner commands, yeah, they have this intense expression as they decide to do this. And the dragons, having wings, they are the most mobile. They'll primarily do reconnaissance, checking on things, and messages. And first of all, we're going to contact Kalmerg and tell him about our will, our objectives, and also convey that to everywhere. Hmm, so, the pride of the dragons, again with that. It means just anything we need it to mean at any given time. To the point you get sick of it. Anyway. The pride of the dragons who uphold the Fuchsia faith. We're going to save... We're going to show the pride by saving Fuchsia. Okay. So. The dragon soldiers that are stationed on the castle will be taking orders from Katorito. And they appear to be ready to do it. Okay. If there's anything else I would like cooperation with, I'll be sure to call you out. So, everybody, this is our castle. We're going to save it and Fia and Pariah. Woohoo, let's go. So, matching up with the order, everybody raises their fists in the air and gives out a shout. We, hey, I didn't hear anything about this. Well, it looks like in order to finish the game, we have to do it like what we did back at Rick Bell. Defeat the boss and then make a bunch of stuff. Okay, reinishi, reinstall, and ratio pearl steel. Hey, I had a bunch of that, but I used it on weapons before watching that scene. Anyway. Yes, Sugida. That is that. So I guess we're going to go here. We need Rian stone and ratio pearl steel. I think Rian Stone we can only get here and one other place a few levels back. It's pretty rare. Obviously I didn't get a single one the last time. But eventually it'll pop up. So we get to keep coming here, maybe try the other place if I get really bored with it. And I may as well show you, unlike most maps, 
where when you come back again, most of the enemies are gone and it's a wasteland. This boss map has almost all the enemies still here. I may have mentioned, I did mention, where we fought Mikshuana and all her angels. We fought over a hundred when we fought with her the first time, and then when you go back, it's six. But this place, it has most of them still there. The boss won't spawn when you go in his room, but other than that, everything is in place. So, I'm going to cut here, do some mining, gathering, capturing of angels, that stuff. So, see you soon. All right, let's see what I got. I got Jack. Okay, then. Still. Oh. He wants to talk. Yeah, I didn't even get any Raisha Pearl Steel. So another what I was looking for. Yes. Mm, this is... Yeah, I think I know what this is. Oh, no, I don't know what this is. Flying blind. Okay, what is it, Fia? You said you wanted to talk about something again. So, Fia came to a consult with Avaro. Just the two of them. Hey, why aren't you wearing your nightgown? It was cute. Okay, something's been bothering her for a while now. Even if it's just Avaro, she needs to tell him. So why did Fia become this way? Why she became one with the castle? That's a good thing to talk about. We talked about Pariah, but we never talked about you. Jeez. So, she's talking carefully and has this uh, bit guarded expression. So, Fia has the experience of being had the experience of being serial into the castle. So she's here to talk about that. So, this is about why she was sealed inside of the castle. Well, first of all, Fia was, as the daughter of Pariah, given a lot of freedom. So, she was allowed to move as she decided to, just freely interacting with people when she wanted to. So, around Pariah, there were other gods than Fia. Yeah. Pariah was, amongst the present gods, fairly high in status. There was an understatement. And anyway. Because of that, the spirits and the lower gods were always around him and, well, obeyed him. Well, he is one of the ones that created the elves. After all, he's one of the famous seven pillars of the green forest. So, Fio 
wanted to live together with the humans all getting along and everything. So amongst the gods that were under Paraya, Fia was the one who took the time to get along best with them. So while you were doing that, were you sealed inside of these magic stones? Yes. Yeah, as you already imagined, probably. If he had got along with certain humans a long time ago, and because of that, she became one with the castle. Ah, uh, you don't need to say it so kindly. Rather than saying you got along with them, you were tricked by them, right? But no, it isn't wrong. Those humans who wanted to live freely, Fia freely cooperated with. You did yourself? Why? Fia thought that by becoming one with the castle, they could solve everything without having a fight with the gods. Whoa. So before, much more than now, the gods were closer existences. So much more than now, when you believed in something, you had someone right there to believe in. But amongst them, there were people who didn't want to be managed by the gods. And Fia, thinking that she could do something, decided to consult with them. So, she did all she did, could to think of a way, such that it wouldn't be a cause trouble for her father, and also so the humans could live freely. And that was the Gualacuna Castle, this weapon you were sealed in. To that question, Fia sadly smiles and nods. So, why did you decide freely to give up your freedom? Well, at the time, it seemed like the best choice, she thought. After all, if it's inside of the castle, those humans could live freely, right? So, in that way, you don't have to be attacked by bad people. And if you're a bother to anyone, you can move away. 
And so you can leave the gods behind. Well, it's not like they're leaving this goddess behind, but... Huh. Is that so? So, she has always kind of been this way, even back then. So, if she finds any way that she can help other people, even if she sacrifices herself, she'll try and do it. So those humans asked you for your freedom and Yeah, they didn't want people deciding for them what they should have faith in. But naturally, the gods didn't listen to that, did they? And Sophia, as a turning point in the castle's earth, became these humans' possession, huh? So, through the power of a god, they were able to get a place they belonged after a fashion. But that sort of thing can't be done unless you sacrifice a god to do it. <laughs> well, in the end, Fia, by her own will, became unable to move. You dummy. Yeah, at the time she was also told that quite a lot. So, she had been told she was a fool. The gods shouldn't have to walk amongst humans. There's no need for it. But still, she, if she could get along with people, thought to do it. But it was no good. Fia by herself wasn't enough. If once your wish is granted, everybody tries to get more, it looks like. So once their ambitions swelled, they began looking for other gods and spirits to take advantage of. So, with Fia cooperating them, did her father, Pariah, also assent to this, to being sealed in a weapon as well? And just like that, the big war started, but ultimately the gods' powers were defeated. Is that it? No, it's a little different from that. So, the way that the war began is a little different than the way it's been passed down. How so? It was that the humans fooled Pariah and his believers angrily, well, started the war. No, it seems that it's different in the way that 
The humans fighting against the dark refiners weren't fighting to save Pariah. Pariah actually fought in order to save Fia and the rest who had been sealed. So the elves and the dragons and the humans that allied with Paraya all together fought and continued to win and the weapons were broken down, their power stolen. And then, those humans that sealed the gods were bottled into where it all began, in the gods' haze. And there, they lost their ability to fight. So finally, Pariah and his forces won. But he didn't, even so, he didn't want to abandon these humans that started the rebellion. He wanted somehow to to uh, make it up with them. And there was also the bit about Fia, who became one with the castle. So, probably there were a lot of talks, Pariah and those people. But in the end, they continued to resist and sealed her father inside of that. So, why her father was sealed, she doesn't know. She wasn't there at the time, but certainly her father. Oh, come on, complete sentences, please. So, it seems they're speculating a bit, but he gave himself up in order to save Thea and the rest of the spirits and gods that had been captured. This was the way to save all the hostages that had been sealed inside weapons. Okay. That was the only way to go. I wonder if it really worked. Well, the God's Haze is where it all began and where it all ended. But the key that started the war was <laughs> the first one to cooperate with the humans. Fia, you're saying. So, slowly she nods. Is that so? So that wasn't recorded in any historical documents. Yeah, obviously, right? So, 
So, next up, let's talk about how she lost her memories. Now that we're talking about, Avaro remembers when he had first called the castle the ruins, right? Yeah, my job was to investigate these ruins. And he came into the castle like that. So, if he was sleeping there for so long that it's that she seemed like the castle seemed like ruins at that point. And as she was moving the castle, she ran out of power. There, when she lost the ability to fight it, her memories of the past were sealed, she thinks. Resistance. Those past humans, uh, oh, I see. When the humans who were driving her lost their ability to resist, that's when she fell. Okay. So inside the magic stones like that, together with her memories, she was sealed in there. So why did these humans in the past make it so that she feel wouldn't be able to remember these things? She doesn't know. Perhaps so that she could better move the castle? Hmm, that could be. You could say to a god without her memory that this is the way you are and you might be able to manipulate her like that. If she were able to resist being uh, over, overrun, ruled like that, then it'd be hard to deal with. So what's this running out of power? So, when her father was sealed in the weapon, he w she wanted to go by a... Well, her drivers wanted to go that way and desperately turned the castle that way towards the god's haze. Oh, wait, wait a minute. At that time, you were so far away. How did you know that Pariah was sealed? Well, of course she'd know. They're father and child, after all. Oh, I see. You understand that, gods do, huh? Well, if Avaro's knowledge is correct, regular adult and regular parent and child don't have that kind of ability. <laughs> gods are really are a different kind of be creature. <laughs> Especially Fia is the one that manages connections. So I guess she would be sensitive to that. And if anything happens to Avaro, Fia would, uh, Fia thinks she would under, Fia thinks that she would know. And when we lost him, she was able to chase him to where he was. Now that you mention it, 
When I was in Raul Rosso, Fia did kind of just jump in there. Oh, now that we mention that as well. Fia, back then, weren't you inside of the Magic Stones? Well, yeah, she was. And so, were you able to move, to go to the holy ground like that? Just like this, freely walking around outside? Oh. So the people who sealed her in lost their lives from the effect of the war and she was able to move a little bit. She wasn't able to get out of the magic stones though. So the humans manipulating the castle died. Then the, the uh, hmm, right to right to manipulate the castle. Oh yeah, in that way, her right to free movement returned to her. Is that it? But if you all by yourself, you were able to move it. If that's the case, she didn't have a contract with anybody like she made with Avaro at the beginning of the game. Well, she was desperate. So, she was probably pushing way too hard. Yeah, still, in the end, she ran out of power right away and lost the ability to move. And I see. Now that I think about it, if Fia was moving it by herself, it wouldn't be that unusual. After all, when Avaro just, just had made a contact with her, the one who moved the castle was Fia. So even if she didn't have a, well, a contractor, eh, so to speak, what power there was within her, she could put into it. But once she ran out, that was it. And then, after Fia fell asleep and Pariah was sealed, Hmm. I've always wondering why those humans that started the rebellion didn't have their lives taken and were just chased out. That bothered you, right, Avaro? Yeah. But would that wouldn't that be because a lot of faith was necessary? Hmm. Well, the faith power was also a reason, but Fia thinks that they also wanted to find a way to save Pariah, and that's why they didn't kill the precursors of the Dark Refiners. Hmm. I see. If we lose all of our hints, that'd be bad. But in this place where it all started, didn't we un didn't we manage to find a way? Well, 
even if they were able to get the knowledge, they couldn't construct it. These castles, all the weapons, won't react to, won't activate to anybody but the bloodline of those humans. The blood, the bloodline, the blood families. Just how far is all this connected? And that's why Fia thought that she needed to fulfill her responsibility. Well, since Fia started it all, Fia feels like she has to fix it with her own hands. But more than anything, she wants to save her father. And on the way, she lost her powers, she fell asleep, she lost her memories, and then she had Avaro awaken her, and now she's finally made it to the God's Haze. Man, that's a long journey. So that's it. That's everything she wanted to talk about. Is that so? So this is all the things you did in the past. Fia looks like she's gotten a lot off her chest. So if I was glad. Okay then. Thanks for consulting me. And also explaining things that Avaro had uh, had doubts about already. But why only me? Well, maybe she wanted to be spoiled a bit. Heh. Spoiled. Everybody, if you told them about that, would accept you, I think. Fia takes a breath and, in a little voice, starts to talk. Yeah, uh, but it's so uncool. Hmm? So was proud, so she, even though she was supposed to be a proud god and everything, way back in the past she failed completely. And even now is relying on so many people to fix her problems, causing trouble. You too, Avaro. Isn't this the disillusioning you about gods and how gods should be? No, uh, no, anyway, Fia, you haven't acted like a god at any point, really. Oh, is that so? <laughs> yeah, that's why we can't exactly be disillusioned at this point. Anyway, Avaro got pulled in by Fia, so to speak, not because she was a goddess. In fact, no connection to that at all. So, she 
while she was being manipulated, did a lot of bad things. There were a lot of lives that were stolen using her power. So isn't that strange? These connections are so important to her, being the goddess of connections, and she herself cut so many of them. She says this like an apology to Avaro, and she's suffering with the guilt it shows on her face. Uh, oh, I see. If you talk to everybody about what happened in the past, you would be pretty embarrassed by that. What the hell, you don't need to laugh at me. <laughs> That's not it. It's not that I'm laughing at you, it's that I'm happy. After all, you wanted me to know all these embarrassing things about you. Well, as your lover, that should be the way it is. Hmm, that's okay then. Say, Kudvans said that Avaro's mom wanted to go to the Holy Land in order to save the God. So that God was her father, Pariah, right? Yeah. Just maybe. Avaro's two parents had the same thing in mind when they were had the same thing as Fia in mind when they were doing that. So just like Fia, they wanted to save Pariah. And from that, connected to those two people, they had a child, Avaro. <laughs> That's the blood that Avaro has. So, maybe to be able to save the god in the end, it had to work out like this. Uh, even though, in the end, they were targeted by the Dark Refiners. Is that so? So Avaro's parents, with the same intention as Sophia, and Avaro too, with Fia, is trying to save Pariah. Whether it's coincidence or fate, we're doing it just the same as Avaro's parents before us. Don't you think the paths are connected? Alright, <laughs> so we better do our best. So, Navarro's inherited from his parents who gave their lives for him this will to do this. So, by saving Pariah, it'll bring a conclusion to everything. Uh, the said I in inherited their hearts, inherited their thoughts, 
of all doesn't quite think that isn't sure that's exactly how it worked. Ah, oh, geez, don't be so lonely like that. Fia thinks that the sentiments of his parents was what brought he, him and of him and Fia together in the end. Is that so? How exactly does that work? It's an intuition. <laughs> yeah, she has that conclusion and it's an intuition. So, no real method of getting it through, huh? Uh, but still, it's true that even if we weren't trying to connect that way, and he wandered across the different kingdoms, in the end he came back and met Fia. Maybe this could be called, maybe it could be said that a connection is there. <laughs> That's right. Fia and Avaro, from the very beginning, had a strong connection. Hmm, perhaps that's true. <laughs> well, to hear the goddess of connection say it, it's pretty convincing. So, looking at Fia's smile, Avaro gets the feeling like he could do anything. Oh, you corny-ass sap. And as her apostle, and as her lover, maybe that's... Okay, I don't know that word. <laughs> okay then. In order to fulfill the expectations of my parents, let's do our best. Right, right. And then we get to make up with coup de vance. No, I'm going to kill that ass. Oh, no. Sorry, bad translation. You're pretty stubborn. I wonder if we really can get along with him. You can, absolutely. After all, you're family. Well. If our goddess there says it, even so, it feels like it'll all turn out all right. Kind of mysterious. Seriously. Hmm. You know, I can't help but feel they've stopped giving out MEGA POWER! I miss it so much. Oh. What did I get? A butt ton of Ramia Sishi? Ramia stone? Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is when you learn another language and you start yes. saying things in yes. the other language when it feels natural. I collected so many angels. Yeah, what did I tell you? Where are you? Hmm. So, Rudin didn't even finish his first round of magic defense. I think I captured a couple of constructs as well. But apparently, we're not getting that today. Hmm. No, oh, females. <laughs> Spirit killer. 
Oh, the constructs. I told you I caught constructs. Goodbye, Solgash. And Solgash number two. Hmm. I still have yet to see a five star enemy. Oh, whatever. Didn't I throw some of these guys away already? Okay, so... This has been a long recording, hasn't it? Next time I get to go back to the God's Haze and try to get that any stone that I need. <sighs> anyway, thanks for watching. And next time, I hope I'll get what I want.